How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I wanted to bring you along with me and just kind of have a little talk about why I chose Sony for my camera gear. So let's jump into it. So we're going to have a little story time. So I actually used to have a Canon, I think SL1 or one of the D's one, I don't remember, my dad gave it to me and I was using it, I didn't really know what I was doing with camera but I used to bring it with me on tour because I used to do a lot for music touring and one day, the last day I had a studio in Cleveland, I had my vehicle broken into and my camera was stolen along with like a laptop or something like that. I was just literally there to listen to the final stages of the record and come out my camera was stolen, my laptop, but luckily none of my music gear. So with that said, I kind of borrowed my dad's, I think he had an icon or something like that that he had for a while. And then I finally decided that I needed to upgrade and get something for myself. I actually got a Sony A6000 on a Black Friday deal because it was very, actually a very good deal. I think I got it for like 450 with like the kit lens and everything. And that's what kind of got me into Sony for the start. After being with Sony and the A6000 for about like two years, I think, I decided that I wanted to upgrade because it was kind of limiting to what I was getting to with how much I was growing with my photography and videography, especially the video aspect because the A6000 only has 1080p. So I kind of wanted to get something with a 4K ability and also with better slow motion. So the camera that I actually went and got was the Sony A7 III. With that camera, the reason why I chose it, I just love the, the, the price point for what it was. And I actually got it on a deal as well. This last November 2019 for Black Friday, they had it $200 off. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna jump the gun. They never put this camera on sale. And it's 2019, now it's 2020. It still holds up its weight for the price point. So I purchased that camera and then I've been using it ever since. I also then bought an A7R II just because I wanted to have two cameras for photography and videography for when I do these videos, I can create more and have those. One thing that I really love about Sony is the price point for what you get with the specs of the camera. The a7 III with the slow motion and the 4K and everything like the 120 frames per second for, I mean, you get that in 1080p, but I think for the price one that you're getting for like 1700 or 1800 when I was on sale that I got it at versus like what Canon has with the EOS R or even the Mark the what is it the 1DX Mark II the price point for that was just kind of ridiculous for what you were getting for me and I didn't like how big the body was either so I kind of just went ahead and chose to stay with Sony and go with that. There were other cameras that were great as well for the price point but for me I already had invested myself with Sony and I love the brand. Another reason why I stayed with Sony is also the lens choices that you get. You get the Sony lenses which yes it can be pricey but they give you a good variety when it comes to like third party lenses with Sigma, Tamron, uh, Rokinon I think it's called. I don't have any of that one but I have Sigma and I have the Tamron one and I have Sony. So my first lens that I got when I got my a7 III that I upgraded. Um, I upgraded to a Sigma 35 millimeter lens, which I actually used to use a lot for videoing for all my vlogs when I first started doing this for the videoing aspects and my photos. And then I got the 85 millimeter Sony on sale because it was used and I got a really good deal on it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy it and just kind of upgrade that one because I wanted a good portrait lens as well. And finally, I got this uh, Tamron 20 millimeter lens because it's easier for video. So that's one of the reasons why I chose those lenses. All around, really great lenses. I know I'll probably get more, but for now, these are kind of the three main lenses that I know I need and can use every single time that I go out and shoot. Another reason why I chose Sony is because the raw format that they have for their photography actually holds a lot of information so you can bring a lot of information back in post if needed in case you kind of got rushed or for the learning process for me kind of helped me understand better how to expose right but at least like if I messed up I could get that information back and still retain it and it would look great. I know a lot of people make fun of 
the Sony users they're like oh mine's the the low light capabilities but there's a reason why because it does have really good low light capabilities when it comes to video as well with my a7 III um, it's been really great for a lot of the video situations where sometimes it's very dark out and I still want to make a video and you don't lose as much quality as you would with a DSLR kind of camera for video. So that's another reason why I chose it. A lot of people say Canon has really nice color science and Fujifilm does as well, but I honestly love the Sony colors. Um, maybe because I'm just used to them by now, but I mean, to me, you can kind of do a lot in post to kind of help you out to get really good colors. So if you're really good into color grading and everything, this camera is really great as well for it. So that's one of the reasons why I just kind of kept with Sony because it's just something that I got used to with my editing and it just made it a lot easier for myself or for a product or for client work. So another reason, you know, that good color science. I know somebody will comment saying Canon's better or Fujifilm's better. It's all about preference. So for me, that's why I chose it. So now that we've talked a little bit about why I've chosen to stay with Sony and use Sony for all my photography and videography kind of situations that I use for a daily setup. I'm going to show you a little bit of examples of why I love it just to kind of give you an idea of if you're looking in the market to see if you want to get a Sony a7 III or an a7R2 because of your budget, whatever it is. But let's get some examples and then, you know, I'll tell you my final thoughts about everything and hope to hear what you think about. I would love to discuss more because it's always great to kind of just see people's input. So here we go. All right, so here is the, the 24 frames per second with the Sony a7 III and I'm using my 20 millimeter Tamron lens. And now here is some slow motion and 120 frames per second. I'm going to show you a little bit of the color science for the video. So this is ungraded video. And then here you go. This is a color graded video to show you the before and after. So now I'm going to give you some examples with some raw photos that we're going to take underexposed to see how much information we can bring back and some that are a little bit overexposed and show you the before and afters and go from there. As you see there with the raw photos, you can bring back a lot of information. So that's why it's key that you shoot raw. So a lot of cameras, obviously, that are really nice, have the raw capabilities. So make sure to use it. But I love how Sony has really good dynamic range and everything like that to bring back information. So that's one of the reasons why I chose it. All right, so my final thoughts on this is just basically, honestly, whatever camera you choose to buy, it will be good enough. But this is the reasons why I chose Sony. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight on the Sony brand and makes you want to buy it. But with all that said and done, hope you like this video. Make sure you like it, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.